In this video, we'll go through the process of creating a Postgres RDS instance, and then we'll log into that, create table, create data. We'll search for RDS, which stands for Relational Databases Service in AWS Console. Here we go, nice landing page. We'll launch the database instance. For this tutorial, we use Postgres, really nice database. Um, now we'll use the dev test. What production offers is this multi-AZ deployment, which stands for multiple availability zones and then increased input output. But dev test instances, they don't have those features, but they included now a free tier, so they are free for you to use for some time. And here we go, so the configuration page, We'll just choose the instance size that is free for us to use for playing around. Uh, let's give it a name. That name would uniquely identify your database in AWS console. And now below we just specify the username and the user password. Basically the, the usual stuff you do when you create database. I'll give a Postgres for both of those, so that will be my both username and password, and proceed. Now the, we choose the default VPC, because we assume that we don't have a sophisticated infrastructure, we're just creating a database. Now public accessibility, we would say yes, because we're going to be logging into the database from our local laptop, which is not a part of AWS infrastructure. Now we will uh, keep giving our database a name. I think the default will be the username Postgres. And no encryption. You could choose the backup retention period. I'll just keep all those options for now, but they're really nice. And if you're interested in using RDS services, you should definitely read on them. So now uh, our RDS instance is being created and you see the status is created. Here you can see all this nice graphs and all the information now for future database instance. Now the creation process usually takes between 5 to 15 minutes depending on the database size. So I'll just fast forward for us. We could also follow the instances link and that will list all the RDS instances we created. As you can see, the status is still creating. And finally, the status changed to backing up. It means that Amazon is now backing up our database instance, our newly created database instance, but it's ready for us to use already. Now we click through to this page of our RDS instance you can see all the sorts of fancy graphs here. They are sometimes very useful. Now we're interested in the endpoint. So the endpoint is the host address of our database, basically the public IP address of the database. Now we go to PG Admin, create a new server, give it a meaningful name. I'll call it first AWS instance. Uh, now we paste in the endpoint address to the host. And then we give the username password we specified early on in the process. And we're good, we're connected. Now we can list the databases. As I predicted, we only have one database with the username. So a list of schemas, only one public schema available. No table so far. So now we're going to create this table. I prepared a SQL statement for it. We'll Right click on the database, tools, query tool, paste that SQL statement, create table. It has it will contain data on some land re registry prices in UK. So now the table's created. Let's refresh the schema tree. Okay, now we can see our newly created table there in the tree. Now we could populate it with some data. I prepared a CSV file for that. So we import it, point it to our file name. It's just CSV file. 
Um, then there is no header. The format, okay, so yeah, we'll choose UTF-8, so standard. There's no header, we'll choose a comma because it's comma delivered file in my case. Okay. Okay, good. So that was a copy command, successfully completed. Now we can query data in our newly created table. Let's run a simple select query. I'll just do a regular select star from and then our table name. We don't specify the schema because it's a public schema. Anyways, let's look at the data. It runs through. Okay, it runs through fine. And there you go, it's ready for you to analyze. That's pretty much it. That's how you create an RDS Postgres instance in AWS query data. And if we go back to web console, we can see that we actually like, used the database, which is really nice. Sometimes those graphs can help when you have problems with your database. Maybe like you don't have enough of memory. Maybe you're utilizing your CPU too hard and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you have too many connections. Or maybe there are times when there are too many connections and there are times where there are not enough connections. Here you can just delete your RDS instance and also don't retain backups because if it's an exercise, we don't really need them. And then you confirm it. And that's that, you're done. That was pretty easy.